Hello my friends and welcome back. So I know I said that we were done with our interaction system, but somebody brought up a good point in that most games usually have like a little tooltip that pops up, E to interact or or info about what you're about to pick up. So I thought let's go ahead and update it to go ahead and put on screen what is in range for the character to pick up. So whenever you're whatever you're about to pick up, it'll let you know. So it's a pretty quick thing, so let's jump over to our project and I'll show you how to go about this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into my player HUD widget. And I am going to drag out an image. And you can size it, scale it, put it wherever you like. I'm going to set this to about 100 by 100, 75 by 75 on mine. And then I am going to drag out a text block. Now the only thing I really want to do for the text block is I want to make sure its justification is set to center so that we always, whatever the name of it is, it always starts right here and should stay centered above our picture. So you can put it wherever you like. I'm just going to leave it there for now on mine. Now I want to, oh, I want to make sure that it is a variable. And I'm going to name my text block item name and the image is going to be item image. Now I'm going to hop over into my graph. Uh, event graph, all right. And I'm going to add two variables. First one is going to be a texture that represents our item image, which I'm just going to call item image. Oh. Item im? I am? That'll work, I guess. I'm going to pull up a texture 2D. So it's this one, not array, not dynamic. You want the texture 2D and you want an object reference. This will be the actual, like, uh, oh, hold on, I'll show you in a second. Uh, and the second variable I want to add is a text block or text item name, item text. Okay. And then I am going to set that as a text block. Now I'm going to compile and show you why the first one needs to be an item image. Because that way we can have access to all our textures that we use to uh, set our images inside our menu. So with that done, I am going to go back to my designer. I'm going to highlight my image and I want to go to the brush. And I want to bind this to my item image, bind the text to my item text, reposition that just a little bit, that's looking all right for now. Now for the visibility, because I only want this to pop up if there's something in range, so I am going to bind this, I'm going to create a binding, I'm going to back this up, and I'm going to drag out my item image texture reference, and I'm going to see if it is valid. You can use either one of these. I'm going to use the function is valid. Basically it just checks to see, make sure it's not pending a kill and it's not empty. So as long as it's valid it'll return true, which is what we want. I'm going to hook that to visible. I'm going to copy and paste this one below it and set that to hidden so that if there is nothing currently set in our item image, it will hide it again. I'm going to go back to the designer and I'm going to set the visibility of the text to the same thing. Visibility, bind, get item image visibility. Wait, is that the right one? Should be, yeah. Okay. Item, oh, item image visibility. Now both of these are binded to the, or bound to the same thing. So they'll both show up at the same time. Which right now, yep, they're not there. So now we need to establish that. So I'm going to go into the player blueprint. And this will be, oh. Where, oh. So now at my event begin overlap, I want to create a custom event called check item 
info, and I'm going to call that right at the end of my adding an item to our pickup or interactables in range array. So we only have to call it the one time because after that it's just going to be basically constantly running in the background. I don't like using the event text, but we will have this basically looping perpetually. So basically what we want it to do is find out if there are any interactables in range at the moment. Okay, so we're going to drag out that interactables in range array variable. We want to drag off and get the length of it. Because remember, arrays start at zero and count up, but the length itself counts how many items are inside the array. So the array itself goes zero, one, two, but the length will be one, two, three. So off that, we want to find out if it's greater than zero. I'm going to add a branch, hook that up just like that, and if it is, I'm going to drag this way up, I'm going to get a copy of the first variable in range, the one that we'll be interacting with, number zero. Off of the true, I'm going to cast to base interactable class and hook up that get to the object. Now what I want to get from here is I want to get the item info from that particular object. I'm going to break it open and then I only want the item name and the item image so we can uncheck all of these other ones. So after that we want to get out a reference to our heads up display. So I'm going to get that and I want to set item I am uh, I guess you didn't have to create variables there's already okay uh well okay I let's try just doing it straight up I guess and if this doesn't work then I'll just go back the other way so for the item engine magician we want to set ah that's why okay okay so yeah we want to drag out our HUD reference and set our item image the item IM because otherwise it won't let us set it and there's a reason I did it that way I just got confused for a second all right now from our HUD reference <coughs> excuse me <coughs> we want to set our item text that will be to the name just like that Now we want to drag out one more copy of each of these, so I'm going to set item m and set oops sir, set item text. Now these I'm just going to leave blank because this will be on if there's not if it's not greater than zero, then we want to set this back to false so that it hides itself one more time. So I'm going to hook the false directly to the set to the set blank. I'm going to hold D on the keyboard and left click for a delay. I'm going to hook both lines directly to it. You can set this. This should be fine. I'm going to, well, I'm going to set it to point 0.1. That way it's checking fairly regularly. And then I'm just going to call my check item info one more time. So this is, it does its check. It waits 0.1 seconds and then it does its check again. You have to have a delay, otherwise you'll get an error um, infinite loop detected because it needs just a little bit of something just to break up its check otherwise it's just perpetually firing and it's just it's too much it's worse than the event tick all right so with all that done did i set what these are bound to yes yes i did all right so now when we go in it's not setting my image. Why ain't you setting my image? The name is popping up. I must not have actually set the image. I did. I must have set it to the wrong one. Remove my binding. Try the other one. Try that one. 
Is that the one I just had it set to? Okay. I'll just remove the binding and then create it manually. So if you need to do it this way, then you'll drag off this return variable and make a slate brush. And then you can just hook up your item image straight to the image. And then that should be... There it goes. I don't know why it wouldn't work in the other way, but... So yeah, now we'll be able to tell what we're about to pick up. And this will be useful for when we get to, you know, when we have doors, we can set a picture of a door in there and then say interact. Or if it's a treasure chest, then we can do that and say use or open or whatever we like. So, yeah. Pretty neat, right? All right. So that's it for this one. And in the next one, we will start setting up our magic abilities. So, see you there. Bye-bye.